everyone, I'm Matt, the owner of Tails' channel, and welcome to the finale of Sonic Story and Sonic Adventure DX. And I have a very special guest, voice of Dr. Eggman, as well as a lot of other things, Mike Pollock. What's up? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Good evening, morning, daytime, whatever time it is there. <laughs> it's nighttime, but I guess no. everywhere in the world it's a different time. But Depends on when you're watching. Yeah. So, all right, this episode's going to be, we're going to be talking about gameplay, but I'm also going to be asking Mike some of your questions that you sent to me through Facebook and Twitter. And some Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So, let me ask the first question now. Uh, all right. Kareen asks, how did your parents react when you told them, my profession is going to be yelling at a blue hedgehog and no voicing truckers, narrators, and wrestlers? Uh, they were on the whole very supportive. Awesome. They were thrilled to see me on TV and try to explain to their friends what I do. All right. That was a quick answer. All right. Simple to the point. All right. Thank you. Next question. Did you listen to the previous Eggman voice acting, such as the late Dean Bristow? God bless his soul. I was given some samples of Dean Bristow during the audition process and told basically to match his voice which I did for the first audition and the first set of callbacks and the second set of callbacks. And then after uh, recording the first couple of episodes of Sonic X and realizing that there was a lot more comedy in the dialogue than Dean Bristow's voice was uh, able to deal with, really, uh, we started adding, um, with the combination of um, my opinions and the director's opinions, some peaks and valleys to, to the delivery. So there were a lot more... High highs up here and a lot more low lows down here. <laughs> so it became a lot less deep Bristol rah, 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 and more varied. All right. Uh, I understand where. That <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm saying. Sorry. I, I don't right, know how to then. word what I <laughs> was about to say. But all right, let's move on to my question. If you could voice any character in the world besides the characters you already voiced, who would it be? Uh, anyone in a high-profile animated motion picture. I'm not real picky. Preferably a principal lead role, but something in a big major motion picture. I've been in minor motion pictures, but I'm still waiting on the major motion picture. Yeah, I I'm still wondering why they didn't put you in Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, I'm wondering that too. Oh well, I mean, I don't understand. That, that would have been awesome to have both Sonic and Eggman's voices, but... For some reason, they just picked Sonic, which is kind of mm. strange to me. Even though Eggman was in the room. Yeah, I don't know. Can't win them all. <laughs> all right. I'm still pretty mad about that, though. But let's move on to the next question before I rage. All right. So, next question from KRK Films. How did you come up with the voice for Eggman? Uh, as we just discussed momentarily, uh, moments ago... It was originally based on Dean Bristow because that's what they wanted for the audition. And then when we realized that Dean Bristow was a little too, uh, I guess monotone might be the right word, uh, or possibly too intense for the comedy of Sonic X, uh, we adapted it to make it uh, a little more flavorful. All right, I got you. So you had to adapt your voice is what you're basically saying to make it like your own, but kind of like Dean Bristow's, right? Yeah, cause, but with all due respect to the dearly departed Dean Bristow, when you're down here all the time, you can't really do, do a lot of comedy because it's very limiting because you've only got pretty much one pitch. So we had to expand a little bit. All right. But, I mean, they went from a really serious approach from Dr. Eggman to a really comical approach in Dr. Eggman. And uh, I think it was kind of, like, weird they changed that. But, I mean... You're awesome as Dr. Eggman, and you make me laugh every time you say a line in the games. Thank you. That's, that's the general idea. But it, as the different games have gone on, some of them have been a little more serious. And as you'll notice if you're paying attention, I've uh, adapted the voice a little bit to make it more intense and serious in the more intense and serious games, and more comedic and fun in the more comedic and fun games. You mean like, it's, you it's Sonic 06, right? You were like... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There was a lot more death and firepower, so... I had to make it a lot more serious. If only Sega had more time with that game, it could have been a huge success, but oh well. Nah, it's out of my hands. <laughs> Alright, uh, let me ask my friend right next to me what was his question, because uh, my friend here, he's going to be helping out with Tails' channel. So what was your question? Uh, 
Uh, it's a tremendous honor. It's a great honor that they asked me to do stuff. All it's, right. It is among the highest compliments one could be paid. Yeah. I am <laughs> so happy that you work for Sega again because your voice is amazing and you know all that stuff. I'm a huge fan, so I don't. Sometimes I might lose my words because I'm just starstruck. So I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> don't be frightened. I'm just some guy. Uh, nah. In my opinion, you're like my idol, kind of, because... Thank you, Sema. Yeah, you really uh, boosted up my childhood and everything with the Pokemon and Sonic and, you know, all the stuff. Even Ella and Sonic X. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. All right. So, next question. From Zach Jackley Relia. What was it voicing both Robotnik and Eggman in Sonic Generations? I'm sure it had to feel awkward to voice both of them. Not really. It was pretty much reading down the uh, lines of dialogue, and they said they both characters pretty much sound the same, so for those people who insist there were differences, I must not have been doing a very good job. Um, but it was basically keeping the two characters distinct in my head, but by the time they reached my mouth, they sounded the same, and just delivering a, a conversation as though I was being two different people. But that's the nature of acting. Acting is all about reacting, and that's what I was doing, just reacting with myself. Yeah, it was pretty funny because Eggman was talking. It sounded like Eggman was basically talking to himself, which he was, but <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. Cool. Thank you. All right. Next question. Uh, another question from Kareen. What was the first or favorite funny voice of yours you liked to do as a kid? Um, that's an excellent question. Um... A friend of mine and I actually uh, did, did impressions of our junior high school teachers for a while. We had some of the same teachers and we had some different teachers, but we ended up doing uh, on cassette at the time, because that's what we had. We made little, uh, I guess they were radio dramas more than anything else, um, based on a day at our school, doing all the voices of our favorite teachers, mostly for our own enjoyment. Um, and <laughs> some of them were pretty darn accurate. And if I run into this guy again, which I haven't done lately, but if I did, we could probably drop right back into our same wacky teacher voices and both laugh at it. So uh, I wish I could say it was some big celebrity, but mostly it was uh, the voices of teachers in school. <laughs> That's funny because me and my friends, we also uh, try to imitate our teachers. You know that, right, Kevin? <laughs> All right. So next question from Gregory Harris, Alpha 12 from the Alpha Gamers. Have you ever watched the Sonic the Hedgehog Saturday morning ca cartoon, also known as SATM? Uh, once, accidentally. Uh, my family and I were at a hotel down on the Jersey Shore, and whatever TV channels were on the uh, hotel TV, one of them had apparently nothing better to run than uh, the Sat AM show. And uh, there it was. I turned it on, and I said, why does this look vaguely familiar? And then I saw the Robotnik character and recognized the voice of Jim Cummings. And I said, oh, that's what this is. This is certainly a product of its time. Then I lost interest and moved on to something else. <laughs> that show was pretty crazy. I mean, mm -hmm. way different. Well, the 80s were pretty great. The 80s were crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next question. Another one from Kareen. Uh, what cartoons did you enjoy watching while growing up? Um, let's see. Mostly Looney Tunes, the classic uh, Mel Blanc voices, uh, provided, uh, proved to be a great influence on me. And also Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. Um, the animation was always rather crude, but the writing was brilliant and the voice characterizations were brilliant. And I laughed a lot watching those. And back when I was just a high school kid, not unlike many of you, with tons of time on my hands and more resources that I knew what to do with, I managed to get the surviving cast members of Rocky and Bullwinkle on the phone and spoke with all of them briefly for a uh, little college radio show that I was involved in. And uh, that was a minor thrill. So I've basically been where you are and I know what it feels like and it's really cool. So it's cool to be on the other end. Uh, it's cool to be on the other end of that equation. Yeah, because I'm a, you're my idol and they must have been your, I mean, idols. So yeah, that's pretty cool they to were. meet your idols. And they were really kind and gracious, and so I try and pay, and and pay it forward, I guess. 
Um, if they could have been as kind and gracious as they were when I was a kid, even though they had long lost the association with their roles and they could pretty much do their character voices without getting in trouble, um, I tried to do the same thing within the various legal restrictions I'm under, but at least talking to people and having brief conversations is always a pleasure. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. It's, it's cool that you met them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so My phone at least, but yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Alright, so let me talk about this boss really quick. This is the final boss for um, Sonic Story. You fight Egg, the Egg Viper, uh, and basically you just jump on Eggman's head, like always. <laughs> it's really not new. Thank you. <laughs> now, thanks for playing. Yeah. But, yeah, this is a great boss in my opinion. But let's move on to the next question, which I thought was kind of weird. But somebody did ask this. All right. Supersonic Rocks 100 asks, are you a brony? A My Little Pony fan? Um, I'm not. I'm a bit old for the program. Uh, I've seen enough of it, and I was mildly amused by what I've seen. It's reasonably well written, reasonably well performed. Um, but uh, I'm well out of the target demographic. So, no. And my two kids who are both closer to the target demographic uh, also would answer the same with a no. But... No, no judging. You're welcome to be bronies if you want, but eh, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't care if you're a brony or not. It's just, I don't know. I just think 30-year-olds watching My Little Pony is kind of, eh. But, I mean, you do what you want. But we just died at the final part of the boss. Should have been easy, but we did. <laughs> Whoops. Best of luck next time. <laughs> All right. So, let's ask another question. My friend Kyle asks, if you did work with them, what was it like working with, with the makers of Sonic the Hedgehog? Um, haven't really worked with... The, it depends on what you would consider the makers. If you consider the Japanese guys the makers, um, the only experience I had with them in the studio, they were in the room on the other side of the glass, mostly coaching and giving advice and being translated by various um, American members of the Sega team um, so that if they had any notes they were able to consult and, and tell me what they wanted. Um, but in general I'm directed by an English speaking member of the Sonic team and then the people that are directing me are not usually at the top of the creative food chain because if, if it's a game that's been designed in Japan and then being localized they're more closer to the localization end of the, of the equation, but they're all fine people and they're fine Sega employees. But again, it depends on what you mean by the creators. Like, so yeah, I mean like Yuji Naka and all them. I met him once at a convention for a minute and a half, standing <laughs> in an autograph line. He was very gracious. I think he knew who I was, uh, and um, I just said, "Hey, thanks for the opportunity." <laughs> but we haven't. I have not actually worked with him. Uh, oh well, he's a, he sounds like a cool guy since he made Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog and all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's move on to the next question, and we just died again. So all right. No, the, no, the horror. <laughs> all right. Next question. This might be a question you heard before, but I guess somebody wants to hear it again. All right. Metal Fusion. I, I hope I answer it the same. <laughs> all right. Metal Fusion Michael asks, How long have you been voicing Dr. Eggman? Since 2005. So about seven years? Yeah, seven years, I believe. Uh, yeah, just about. All right. So another question from the awesome Kareen. All right. Do you ever yell at your children, order food, or make prank calls in your Eggman voice? Um, not intentionally, but yes. Um... <laughs> Depending on how angry I'm getting at the children, the voice of the yelling does sound very Eggman-like. Um, but that's kind of, it's my yelling voice. Um, and I seldom use it uh, otherwise in real life, except for one little story that I'm fond of telling, and I'm so fond of telling it, I'll tell it again. Uh, the family and I were out at a little state fair, and uh, apparently uh, Sonic was a big midway prize that year, so some kid 
walked by with a, I guess, what would be considered life-size, a life-size Sonic plushie on his back. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, enjoying a refreshing beverage. I looked up for my refreshing beverage and just yelled, Look, it's Sonic! And just watched the kid's head whip around, wondering where the heck that came from. <laughs> and I just put my, uh, put my face right back in my drink as nonchalantly as possible and didn't let on that it was me. Wow, that is such a troll move. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Wow. All right. Let's answer. We only have three questions left, so let's... Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Bing Bang Blader 15 asks, What is your favorite Sonic character, and would you voice any other Sonic character than Eggman if you had the chance, except for Ello, because we all know you voiced her. Right, well... Of the two characters that I voice the most often, Ella might be my favorite only because it's such a hysterical bit of casting to have cast me as Ella. Um, but as far as characters that are not uh, me, um, Bokun from Sonic X, because the lovely and talented Tony nominated and now TV star Andrew Reynolds, who did the voice of Bokun, the fact that he could do that high, squeaky, uh, I guess annoying would be an appropriate word, voice for Bokun all by himself without any electronic trickery amazed the heck out of me because I can't do that without sounding like I'm being strangled um, and he can do that which is why he was on Broadway in Book of Mormon and I wasn't oh, wow. but that's fine yeah so um, that's that's very impressive um, as far as other characters in the franchise no I don't. I don't have another possible choice because I'm quite happy with uh, Doctor Eggman. Thank you. Much. All right, but yeah, Bokun is a pretty good character. I liked his sense of humor. Like he comes to Sonic, then he blow them up, and <laughs> it's actually pretty funny. Perfect. All right, so we finally defeated Eggman, and let's see if we can actually dodge it this time. <laughs> Best of luck. We got this. We got this. Give me a little look here, Gavin. We're all counting on you. Oh. And we did it. The Egg Viper is destroyed. Finally. We just destroyed you, Mike Pollock. I mean, not no, Mike Pollock. No, the pain. <laughs> it wouldn't be Mike Pollock. It would be Dean Bristow. Or, yeah, because I think he voiced Sonic Adventure. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But Nor can I, but that's what Google is for. <laughs> Alright, if you guys know that, just leave it in the comments. I would love to know, even though I'm going to search on Google anyway. It's fun to hear your insight. Alright, so here are, is the basically ending scene of Sonic Story. And every um, end of every scene, I'm going to play the credits. This is only because I want to give tribute to the amazing creators of this game, even though it's long and <laughs> most. If you can see the credits, you'll see who. If you can see the credits, you'll see who was in it. And exactly. Answer your question. All right. So while uh, the music plays and Sonic does that, let's ask some questions. All right. Gamer Guide Seven Aces asks, "What other roles have you done before you got the role of Dr. Eggman?" And yes, he has done other roles for people who don't know. Sure. Um, most of them up until the time of Dr. Eggman were for four kids TV type productions. But the first, other than lots of bit parts in various commercials and, and, and comedy bits during my radio career, um, the first big uh, direct-to-video thing I did was a, uh, a, a VHS tape, uh, which is still available but not worth the exorbitant price that it's selling for. Um, called Little Tug's Big Adventure. It was live action video of boats in New York Harbor and I played the voice of all the male boats. Um, again, forgetful, but if, if you've got some money to burn and want to laugh, check it out. Um, but for 4 Kids TV, I was Meat in Ultimate Muscle. I was the mayor and Kirby, or uh, Samo the bartender in Kirby Right Back At You, along with some incidental roles. Uh, I was the narrator of Pokemon for a while. Uh, I was uh, Hot Dog Gonnet in Fighting Foodons, and then I did uh, promos for the Fox Box for a while as well. 
Four. Oh, that sounds fun. But let me ask you a question. Did you hear about the um, 20th anniversary video game for Kirby that they're selling, or do you just not care? Because I know you don't really like video games. If I'm not in it, I would not have heard, most likely. And it's not that I don't care. It's just that, I, again, I'm a little out of the target demographic. So <laughs> if they need me, they know where to find me. And if they don't need me, which I, they usually, I don't think I've been in any of the Kirby, Kirby video games, so I would not expect the call. If there was a 20th anniversary Kirby right back at you revival, which wouldn't happen because that was just odd, um, they would call me for that, I guess, but no, I don't expect that to happen. Yeah, I believe they had a uh, 3D version or just a revival of Kirby right back at you, and it was released on the 3DS, and yeah, I think it was just from 2D to 3D. It was pretty awesome. Excellent. All right. So the last question before we just talk or something. <laughs> All right. Jesus asks, did you ever want a voice in a Mario game? And if you ever have, who would you voice? I want a voice in everything because I love working. Um, so if, if the friendly folks uh, in charge of Mario were to call, sure. Um, but beyond that, I don't pay attention to Mario because, again, I'm out of the target demographic. I'm not a gamer. Um, so... I have no preference, but if they were to call and they had a role for me, sure. Who would you like to voice, though, like from the Mario series? I don't know enough of the people from Mario to have an opinion. Ah, so I gotcha. I, so, I don't know. Take your choice. Who would All you right. like me to voice? There's your question. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Leave in the comments what you want Mike Pollock, if he ever did. The voice in the Mario series. Perfect. And also ask him if he, I mean, leave in the comments if you wanted him to voice any other character for the Sonic series or just any other video game series. Sure. I want to hear what you guys want to think. <laughs> leave your comment. That. Comments are free. All right. So that's basically all the questions. So how about we talk about like, I know people have heard this like a million times already, but how did you, uh, just get the role of Dr. Eggman and he already said this in my other one but it will fill up time <laughs> oh, right then. Um, it was an audition process much like any other one except this one was longer than most any audition process I've ever been involved in four kids had already been aware of me from having done the various other stuff that I just mentioned and this mysterious project called at the time codenamed Pro Project X came along and uh, when we eventually were uh, allowed to know that it was Sonic X and they were holding auditions for it. They seemed to be keenly interested, at least the four kids people were keenly interested in having me audition and trying to convince the friendly folks at Sega that I was the guy to be Dr. Eggman. So they sent me a couple dozen clips of Dean Bristow from games and they said, here, listen to these and match them. So I went home and spent about an hour going, rah, 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 I'm Dean Bristow, rah, 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 Sonic, rah, 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 rah. And then went in a couple days later and did the uh, exact same lines for my audition and did, read back what I had heard as, as best I could and went away and back to my normal drab, wretched life and got another uh, call saying, we've got a call back. We want you to come back in and do it again. So I went back in, did the same thing again. Rawr, 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 I'm New Bristol. Rawr, 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 and went out and returned to my drab, wretched life. And then a few days later, got another call. We have another round of callbacks. Come on back in. So I went back in and did the same thing a third time. And apparently the third time was the charm. And they said, hey, perfect. We want we want to book you to be Dr. Eggman. So that was that. So dragged on for two or three weeks of auditions and callbacks until apparently 4Kids was able to convince Sega to uh, book me for the gig, which they did. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Uh Man, these credits are long. Uh, so, how's your day? Uh, the day was lovely. We we're trying to uh, add as much uh, uh, extra weekends to summer as we can. So, we uh, went to uh, our favorite barbecue place here in our lovely mountain retreat. And we had some lovely ice cream. And we had a uh, tour of an ice harvesting museum, which was probably not quite as exciting as we hoped but it killed about an hour of our time lovely all right and we just saw the um english voice for dr eggman and it was dean bristow so Perfect. i mean 
You guys could still comment, but I mean, we all know now, since I just said it. <laughs> Unless the credits were lying. I doubt that. Uh, I bet Sega will get sued. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Alright, so, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Um, uh, hmm. Do you have anything you have to say, Gavin? Are you sure? Yeah, Gavin will be my assistant for Tails Channel. Just say hi. Yeah, he has a very low voice. Uh, so, Mike, how about you tell us about your, um, like, what got you into voice acting? Uh, sure. As a child, uh, when I wasn't calling my cartoon idols on the phone, uh, I was a fan of, uh, cartoons and, uh, radio, mostly. Hang on, there's a call coming in. <laughs> Chat amongst yourself for just a moment. And I think Mike Pollock just left for a call. Uh, it might be for an audition. I think this episode is kind of silly. <laughs> uh, so, why don't you introduce yourself, Gavin? Hi, uh, my name is Gavin. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna be a helper for Tails Channel now. He goes to my school. Uh, yeah. We have some other friends over. Uh, <laughs> Mike Bullock's just answering a call now. And these credits are very long. I don't know why Sega kept, uh, the audio out. Um. Um. All right. Yep. Look at all these credits. All these credits. Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, man. These credits are very... Oh, here we go. It's about to end. And we should get Mike Pollock back here soon. Hopefully. So he can tell us a little bit about himself. Hopefully. Or I'll just tell a little bit about him. Tell for him. Or I guess we can wait. I mean... Ah. Uh, so... No. <laughs> um, yeah. Made by Sega. Uh, yeah. Uh, still talking about Sega and Sonic Team. Taking a long time. Huh. Taking a very long time. Yep, and there's Sonic, finally. Yep. All right, so that was the finale for Sonic the Hedgehog. And I'll just say a few words for Mike Pollock since I know his stuff. Let me just bring it up real quick and I'll tell you all his websites and everything since he had to take a call. It might have been really important, so I don't want to <laughs> get him for that. It's all right. All right, so go to itsamike.com, facebook.com slash itsamike, twitter.com slash itsamike, and the latest deadlines.blogspot.com. That's where he basically makes jokes about people, famous people who recently passed away. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I want to thank Mike Pollock for being on here, even though he can't say bye, because he's on the phone. And we'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this kind of silly, yet fun episode of Sonic Adventure DX. And the t first part of Tails' story will be next, and that'll be fun. Alright, I'm Matt, the owner of Tales' channel. Mike Pollock was here, and we'll see you guys next time.